All right, so I have a lot of books. I've reviewed a lot of books on the channel. People are always asking me, what books do I recommend? What books do I think everybody should own? I get a lot of book questions. And so I'm gonna make two videos, okay? This video is all about the books that I <clears throat> need to reference, okay? These aren't prepper books. These are books that I will use when there is no internet. And the reason I always feel there's no internet is because I know personally, if I was on some financial hardship, the very first bill that I would get rid of would be the internet. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the reason for that is it's like $100 a month just to have the internet. And if that wasn't enough, the second bill that we would get rid of would be our phones. Because again, that's like 200 bucks a month for both of us. And I could easily get flip phones for like $60 a month. So I'm going from $300 a month to 60. And so that $240 I can either put towards something else or maybe I just don't need it anymore if uh, there was job loss or something where we don't have the income that we have right now. Those would be the things that I get rid of right away. Because I'm not, I don't wanna, <clears throat> I'm gonna keep paying the mortgage. I still need water. I still need food. I still need electricity. I still wanna live comfortably. You know what I mean? And I don't find the internet a necessity like most people do. And my books allow me to think that way because what I use the internet for mostly is learning how to do things. Uh, I'll forget how to do something and so I'll Google it real quick. Or maybe I don't know how to fix something so I'll go on YouTube and learn how to fix it. And there's a lot of times where the internet solves a lot of my problems. But it's really not worth $1,200 a year if I need that money for something else. And so these are the books that I would reference after the fact. Once the internet's all gone, these are the books that I would reference. I'm going to do another video where I talk about books for people that want to get into prepping. They'll be prepping books that teach you the highs, hows and the whys and all the skills and everything. Uh, that'll be a separate video. This video is focused on just things that I might need that I would usually Google or look up on YouTube. These are the book versions of that stuff. So getting started, these are in no particular order. I'm just gonna start from my right to my left. This is a pocket reference guide. Now the pocket reference guide, my grandpa used to keep one of these in his glove box. And this was the internet before the internet. This has a whole bunch of information in it. Uh, if I go through the context here, <clears throat> the table of context, it's got uh, trade names, trademarks and references, air and gases, automotive, carpentry and construction, chemistry and physics, computers, uh, constants, physics, chemical and math, electrical, wiring, motors, frames, receptacles, electronics, fasteners, bolts and threads, nails, screws, first aid, General Information 1, General Information 2, Telephone Numbers and Airports, General Science, Geology, Glue, Solvent, Paints and Finishes, Math, Mine, Mill and Aggregate, Money, Pipe and Fitness, or Pipe and fit, Fittings, uh, Pumps and Tanks, Rope, Cable, Chains and Knots, Steel and Metals, Surveying and Mapping, Tools, Water, Weather and Weather Safety, Weights and properties of materials, welding, conversion tables, 14 year preparational calendar, and then the index. And so there is a ton of just general information in this little book. And this is, <clears throat> my grandpa used to carry this around and I know a few people that used to carry one of these around. And in the front cover, uh, they would put phone numbers. And so like to their utility company, their family, their friends, their bank, their all the phone numbers that they might need, they would keep in the front cover. And then I think my grandpa used to put our McDonald's order in the back cover and our pizza. And so every once in a while he would stop over with McDonald's and everybody would have exactly what they wanted because he had the order written in the back cover. And uh, he had the pizza order too, which is really nice because we'd be doing something and my mom would ask him to order pizza and he would just go order pizza because he had the information. It wasn't this, 
<clears throat> what do you want? What kind of pizza do you want? What do you usually get? You know, it's just talking over what kind of pizza. He never asked. He just went to his little book and he ordered exactly what it said in the back cover. And so we always had what we wanted and we always, you know, he was always able to just take care of whatever he needed to take care of. And I thought that was really cool. And so I might do that to my book here eventually. Uh, the next book is Basic Butchering of Livestock and Game. If you have to feed yourself, if you have to butcher your own animals, like we come across really hard times, the economy is going crazy, the world is not the same as it used to be. This will teach you cows, pig, rabbit, lamb chops, lamb, uh, veal, chicken, there's duck, there's a lot of butchering in this and the reason I like this one so much is because it gives you the anatomy it tells you all the tools that you need but it gives you the uh, here let me see if I can find the anatomy of the cow so it shows you where the brain and the heart and all the organs and everything are but it also shows you where the cuts of meat are and so you can kind of get an idea of where the cuts are from and where you can get like a prime rib or a ribeye or baby back ribs or you know, it shows you how to do all of that. And so if you ever have an animal and you're expected to butcher it yourself, this is a great book for that. The next book, you can see this one, I have marks everywhere. This is a OBD2 book. It teaches you how to use a code reader or a scan tool on your vehicle. So if you have a vehicle that was made in 1996 or newer, underneath the steering wheel will be an OBD2 port where you would plug in a scan tool or a code reader and then it will show you what's wrong. It will tell you why your check engine light's on. You can look at the different modules to make sure everything's working properly. Uh, it'll talk about all the different wiring. It'll show you your sensors and how they're performing. Uh, you can look at your transmission and your engine and your airbags. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, depending on the kind of scan tool you have, you can really do a lot. And this teaches you how to use that scan tool and what to do to diagnose and fix the problems your scan tool bring up. And so I really like this book a lot. There's a lot of OBD2 books and they just talk about OBD2, like the history and what there used to be before OBD2. They talk about like OBD1 and how the different scan tools and then they talk about like what OBD2 is and how it's evolved and it like talks about the computer itself where this teaches you how to use the computer to fix your car which is what I care I don't care about OBD2 I don't care when it was invented and who invented it. I don't care about any of that I just need to fix my car and that's why I like this one so much uh, next book is the ultimate guide of home repair and improvement now again if there's no internet you still need to take care of things. You still need to take care of your electrical. You need to take care of your plumbing. You need to take care of your porches and your decks and your drywall and your ceiling fans and all, everything around your house. It gets old. It wears out and you have to replace it. This is going to teach you how to replace it. It's going to teach you how to diagnose problems. It's going to tell you how to... Uh, look at things so that you can tell what's exactly wrong with them. It teaches you how to keep your house safe. And so I really think that everyone should have a home improvement book that they can reference and make sure that they have the information to take care of their home. Because again, the three basic things you need is food, water, and shelter. And so being able to take care of your shelter is a very, very important thing that you need to consider. And if the internet goes away, you still got to live somewhere, right? Uh, next is make it don't buy it now I don't think this is be for everyone but Caroline and I use this book and what this book is is it teaches you how to make things that you usually buy at the store such as ketchup mustard uh, mayonnaise marshmallows uh, bacon jams and jellies pasta potato chips uh, the things that you buy at the store if the store shelves run out, we've all been there. There was a shipping crisis. Uh, a lot of places were locked down. We've seen where we can't buy what we need. 
this teaches you how to make it instead of buy it. And so I really like this book as well. Uh, next is Home Preservation. This is a ball guide. This teaches you how to can things. So if you have a garden, you can take that food and you can preserve it so that it lasts a year. It lasts through the winter, however long. And you can uh, water bath can or pressure can. And it teaches you just how to preserve the food so that you're not throwing it away. You're making sure that it stays good for as long as possible. So you're one, getting your money's worth, and two, making sure that you are able to consume it instead of just throw it away. Next is the Encyclopedia of Country Living. This is a big, huge book. I'm gonna quick read through everything, well not everything, but some of the things that are in here. So you have live off the land, grow your own food, build a cabin, grow mushrooms, milk goats, understand soil, make organic bug spray, cook egg noodles from scratch, deliver a baby, make food from milk, grow your own coffee, create homemade furniture polish, calculate harvest yields, cope with weeds and pests, plant a tree, make fruit leather, cultivate a rice paddy, master old time harvesting technology, build a straw stack, Make raw tomato slash spaghetti sauce. Try new rules for canning. Learn first aid and snake and spider bites. Make 20 minute cheese. Cut down a tree. Build a mud oven. Uh, master basic veterinarian skills. Tap a maple tree. Build irrigation system. Make green manure. Understand earthworms. Cook dandelion blossom fritters. Stock a fish pond. Birth piglets, calves, and lambs. Make hay. Uh, pickle, veg pickle vegetables, forage for wild food, feed your livestock, use medicinal plants, build a barn, and house chickens. That's just some of the things that are inside this book. And so again, if there was some kind of a collapse or some kind of a country living situation where you have to rely on yourself and you have to take care of yourself and you have to provide all your basic needs for yourself, this book is going to help you. And like, I sh like it showed teaches you how to take care of calves, pigs, and lambs, well, if you're taking care of calves, pigs, and lambs, this book might help you butcher them for food. And so having a variety of these books can really go hand in hand with each other. Uh, another book is Freshwater Fish. And the reason for this book is because if you can, there's a lot of fishing books out there and they're all pretty much the same. It's just somebody's opinion on what lures to use, what fishing uh, equipment to use, what, you know, getting on, fishing on a boat, fishing on the shore. And it's just basic opinion, right? You can take 10 guys from work and they're all going to claim that their way is the best and no one's going to catch anything, right? Uh, and so this here just teaches you about the fish. If you can eat what they naturally, or if you can look up what they naturally eat and you can look up how they their swim patterns and where they like to live and where they like to be, you know, if they want to be on a shoreline, if they want to be on a uh, weed line, if they want to be in the, in the thick of the weeds, do they, are they in schools, are they individual, are they in deep water, shallow water, if you can understand their habits and the way they naturally do things, you can be there when they're there and you can try offering them their native food and you can probably catch more fish if you learn more about the fish than you do about the person actually fishing. So I like this book as well. Uh, next is we have the Peterson Guide. If you're going to be foraging for food, uh, a lot of people are gonna garden, but if you don't have a way of gardening, you're gonna be foraging. The Peterson Guides are really good for finding edible wild plants, medicinal plants, and trees. Those are the three that I have. And it's very important that you understand what it is that you are consuming and how to consume it and making sure that it is safe and that you're not accidentally eating things that are poisonous or harmful to you or anybody else. These will help you clearly identify a plant, clearly identify what it's for, and so that you do not get sick or worse. So having field guides for wild edibles and medicinal plants, I think, is really important. Next we have the survival handbook. This is a medical book. This is going to teach you how to essentially be your own doctor and how to take care of yourself and the people around you and 
the importance of knowing these things. It talks about that as well. And it's just one of those things where it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And even though I can't do some of the things in this book, I have two neighbors that are uh, nurses. They're RNs. And so even though I can't do it, they probably can. And so for them to be able to read this and get a quick refresher or get some ideas, because this is uh, like after the collapse, right? This isn't like in a hospital setting. This is like anarchy or after an economic collapse or we're all on our own. It'll show them, it'll give them some ideas on what to do with the basic things around us, right? They're not going to have the equipment they have at the hospital, but it will show them some basic information so maybe they can get some ideas on how to do it with what I have laying around the house or what they have laying around their house. And so I really think this is a good book. Even if you don't understand it, it doesn't mean that a family member or a neighbor or somebody that you have access to won't understand it either. They can really help a lot if, if they have the information. Here we have where there is no dentist, same concept. Uh, only when you have a toothache, it's the worst pain ever because there's nothing you can do to make it feel better. You can't lay on one side, you can't, there's nothing you can do to make that, ease that pain a little bit. And so being able to learn how to take care of your teeth, treat your teeth, again, even if you don't understand it, there are people around you that might. And so just having the information I think is important. And then, sorry, there's a train, if you can hear the train. Uh, next is James Weasley Rawlings Tools for Survival. Now these are actual tools. They're not, uh, a lot of people when they think of survival, they think of like bushcraft or woodcraft or camping. They think about being out in the wild. Uh, this is kind of like that. It has that as well. But it's a lot of like drills, saws, uh, screwdrivers, pliers, you know, basic tools that you need and why you would need them and the importance of of the different tools and so this is this is one that I don't know if I would reference because once you have the tool and you learn how to use it you don't really have to reference how to use it again but if I were to because right now I use an electric drill if I had to use a bit and brace I might go in here and try to figure out what exactly to look for in a bit and brace so that I can get the job done with a minimal effort as possible. Uh, if I use a Sawzall and now I need a bow saw, how do I know which kind of bow saw to get? How do I know, you know what I mean? And so it's not going to be something that I reference like all these books. All these books is I have a problem, these are gonna fix my problem. This is more of a, I'm not really sure the non-electric version of what I need to do. And so this will help with that. So I think that's important. Uh, next, here we'll look at this one. This is Anatomy 360. For me personally, if there is a problem with me, I don't know doctor language, okay? When the doctors are talking, I have no clue what they're saying. You know, you have a hairline fracture in your clavicle. I don't know what that means. I do know what that means, but you know what I mean? Like when they're talking and I don't know what that means, it's hard for me to understand everything. This book, let's try to find something that isn't like gross. This book shows a lot of different things, all right? And the pictures are humongous. So you can see there's very large pictures. And so what this allows me to do is if I say you have a hairline fracture in your clavicle, right? Which is a, your clavicle is your collarbone. They can show me this giant picture and be like, see this bone right here? There's a little fracture, there's a little crack in it. It's not broken, but there's a little crack in it. And I can go, oh, okay. And so then they can tell you like, you need to not use it. Even if it feels better, you need to not use it because it can crack again or it can break. And so you need to take care of it. Even when it starts feeling better, it doesn't mean that it's, you know, sometimes when you like pull a muscle, it gets stiff, but then you have to use it to work that muscle. That's not what you have to do in this case. In this case, you have to wait for it to fully heal 
before you use it. And by having the pictures and being able to see what they're talking about, being having a diagram to explain what's happening, I think would just, it would help me tremendously. And so it might help you and the people around you as well. So that's why I included it in this list. And I just, I, I'm a visual person. And if I can see what is going on, if I can have it explained on a picture, I can just, I can understand it a lot better. And if I can understand it a lot better, it helps me to do what I need to do. You know what I mean? Like I, I understand that there's a hairline fracture. I need to take care of it. And so I can take care of it. Where if I don't really understand it, I'm going to assume it's just like a muscle strain or a muscle whatever. And I'm going to try to work it out. And I'm going to try to get back to work and doing what I need to do. And just kind of work through the pain and kind of loosen it up again. And that could do more damage than good. And having a visual would be better. Next is a dictionary. This is a dictionary and thesaurus. I don't think you need the thesaurus. But a dictionary, there's a lot of books. There's a lot of books on things that you may have never studied before, you've never heard of before, you've never even had any interest before. And there's a completely different, it's completely different owning a book and then reading the book, okay? Reading the book is obviously 10 times better than actually just owning the book, but understanding what you read is like a thousand times better than just reading it. And a dictionary helps you understand what you're reading. It helps you when you come across things and you're like, what is that? And you look up the word, it helps you understand and get a deeper understanding of what it is you're reading so that you can get the most out of each book. You know what I mean? It's, it's one thing to own it. It's another thing to read it. But the key is to understand what it is you're reading and understand what it's trying to tell you and what it's trying to show you and exactly what the book has to offer. And a good dictionary is gonna help you achieve that. It's just gonna help you get the most out of all of these books. So that's my video. Uh, if any of these books look like something you're into, I will leave links in the description box down below. Again, it's, it's not, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. It's better to use the internet. The internet's gonna have all this information for free. You can Google it, you can YouTube it. All the information is right there at your fingertips. But what if it's not? You know what I mean? What if your internet provider, something happens, there's a glitch in the system, there's a something, and now you have to go with no internet for even just a month, right? How are you gonna entertain yourself? How are you going to take care of yourself? What are you going to do in that situation? Well, for me personally, I wanna make sure that I have the information, the important information that I need to take care of my house and home and from there, the rest is just doing what I want, right? Uh, so, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you want to subscribe, there's a little red button to do so. And I can't wait to see you on my next video.